During 1965 and 1966, Prince Edward School in Salisbury, together with the Rhodesian School's Exploration Society, undertook a scientific expedition to a wild and remote part of Rhodesia. This is the record of their journey into the southern part of the Chimanimani mountain range, to the mountains and forests that border the Haroni River. But it is more than that. It is a tribute to the initiative and stamina of Rhodesian youth. There was a limit to where motor transport could go. Thereafter, all the equipment had to be carried. First, to a camp located across the 1,500 foot deep Haroni Valley, and thence onto other areas. Before the portage, the large loads were broken down to a more manageable size. The base camp track led through dense forest along rough and stony ground before climbing up precipitous slopes lapped by turbulent and icy mountain streams. On arrival at base, the expedition split into three groups, each with a special task. One party was to establish top camp, from where an ancillary expedition was to explore into Mozambique. The path was steep, and in places nearly perpendicular, but halfway up, a large cave invited exploration. Once reached, its towering and vaulted ceiling pointed to the sky through a natural window.
Having attained the rim, the party was greeted by a high plateau ringed with granite peaks. Hardly had they arrived before a cold mist of drizzling rain descended, ensuring a miserable night. The following morning dawned bright and cheerful with a warming sun. This brought out the first of the specimens to be bagged by the collectors, a Berg Adder. Further down the slopes, dominated by the hill known as the Dragon's Tooth, were scenes of exhilarating beauty. It is worth noting that all the work carried out by the boys was scientifically designed to improve our knowledge of the area. Even this film was made by a party of the boys. The sound of cascading water was a constant background. The camp laundry was established in one particular backwater where the less sure-footed frequently came to grief. It was here that the sword-tail, swallow-tail butterflies discovered their affinity for humble bar soap. These beauties came from far and wide to settle on the suds. The towering forests were a butterfly collector's paradise. Each patch of filtered sunlight on the forest floor held treasures like these. As each specimen was caught, details were immediately recorded to assist the National Museum later. As with the butterflies, so with the birds. Every branch and shrub was a home to a host of birds, both large and small.
Selected specimens were sought out and shot before being handed to the skinners. At this collection point, each bird was carefully cleaned, skinned and preserved under the nimble fingers of the skinners. These people were skilled in their work, having been trained by the National Museum. Fresh air makes healthy appetites, and so the kitchen and the cooks soon became the focal point. With 22 to feed, cooking kept four people fully occupied, and this was a chore shared by all. A boomslang, a venomous snake, is hiding in this hollow tree, and there's only one way to get him out. Take this rope. Six feet of galvanic malevolence trapped and in the bag. Spiders of many kinds met their Waterloo in the collector's bottles. Some of them were really horrifying, like this giant baboon spider, whose fangs, seen in close-up, warrant our respect. A rich bounty of fish sheltered in the river waters. Those in search of fish specimens braved the freezing water in inflated inner tubes. It was easier to work the still backwaters than the river's current. Broadcast on the water, a potent poison allowed the fish to be caught at leisure. The effect of the poison was temporary, enabling unwanted specimens to recover and resume their fishy existence. Mr. Stubbings, manager of the Melsetta Forestry Estates, greatly assisted the botany group. Interesting specimens abounded, for the local wildflowers are profuse and lovely. Plants, shrubs and trees yielded a rich harvest of knowledge, while quite unconcerned, a busy bumblebee sips wildflower nectar. It all culminated in a burst of effort by another group, who had the task of making a forced march to the legendary Gossamer Falls in Mozambique. This was to be a tough, forced march on compass bearings. Equipment is to be kept to a bare minimum, as it all had to be carried. Moving off in the wilderness, the lonely party of boys and masters left all traces of civilization behind them. The halts were all too short, but did allow them to enjoy the breathtaking panorama. A 
clean and dry poacher's cave made a welcome spot for the first night's camp. Keen and biting winds that swept the mountain as fragile, delicate orchids sheltered in the rough tussock grass. But these two yielded their beauty to the young collectors. The open grasslands soon gave way to dense areas of natural forest. Icy mountain streams made welcome stopping places. Soon, it was back to the trail again as the party stuck doggedly to their course in rough and unforgiving country. Alas, although the falls were sighted, it was not possible to reach them in the time available. Reluctantly, the footsore party turned back to rejoin the main group. The falls would have to wait for another expedition. With the return to civilization imminent, it was all bustle back at the base, as the boys packed the equipment for portage to the motor rendezvous. Other expeditions would once more use this base, but now time was up. Each parcel was fully packed, stenciled with a number, and its contents noted. Then tired, but content, they turned their backs on the beautiful valley, the land known only to God. Wow!